All right, welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and today I'm going to do my top four minivans with one honorable mention for 2024. Now, while the minivan market has shrunk over time, and manufacturers like Ford and GM have left the minivan market, the ones that have remained, there's enough sales for them to continue to innovate and continue to come out with new products. And there's still people out there who realize how friendly minivans are, how useful and efficient, cost efficient, space efficient they are relative to loading El Kiddos into a Tahoe every single day. Between my wife and I, we've had three minivans and it's hard to beat them. As a matter of fact, as I've said on the channel before, my wife had two minivans, got an SUV, and would like another minivan. So even though we're empty nesters, the utility, the efficiency, and the, yes, the luxury of a minivan is still appealing. It's hard to beat sliding doors once you've had them. So today I'm going to rank my top four again with an honorable mention at the end. But I've got to say, this market is so competitive it really is a tie for number one and a tie for number three. But I think that's cheating, so I'm going to rank these four, three, two, one. But really, it's a top two and a bottom two. It's, it's a tie for one and a tie for two. So let's jump into it. Number four, I've got to go, and it breaks my heart, the Chrysler Pacifica. Now, this is a strong contender, and Chrysler originated the entire minivan market and there's a lot of great innovations here. They do still have a, a, a modestly, styling is subjective, modestly attractive outside, a modestly attractive inside. Their Uconnect system is probably the best in the, the, the market, honestly. Stone goes seating on the non-hybrid models. And yes, that means they have a hybrid option, which gives fantastic gas mileage, but you pay for it. The problem with the Chrysler is really really simple it boils down to two things the first is styling while this is subjective and you may disagree with me i find it a little awkward it's weird to me that the company that innovated minivans for so many decades has ended up with something that seems a little bug-eyed a little narrow a little tall it's just a little awkward overall i think the interior is attractive but some of the materials aren't quite there it ends up being somewhat compelling but not necessarily for the price but what kills it for me is the reliability the chrysler minivans are not reliable overall now of course i'm going to hear from people who say i've had one and it's been flawless but i have talked read and heard people who absolutely they're miserably unreliable and unfortunately a lot of it comes from the engine for that reason I would leave them to one side. I think the Mini, the Chrysler, the Pacifica is a little long in the tooth. I think Chrysler missed the mark with it. And I just think they've let it languish on the vine a little too long. That leads me to number three, the Kia Carnival. Now, once you get over the ridiculous name of this vehicle, I'm surprised that Kia stayed in the minivan market. Their earliest offerings were okay, but not exceptional. I guess they sold enough to make some money off of it. And what they came out with is something that they intended to look a little more SUV-ish to take some of that stigma of owning a minivan away. And they come out with a very compelling package. It has, I believe, the most powerful engine V6 in the minivan market. It's got a really good-looking interior, at least in pictures, that... You know, it's reminiscent of some of the bigger SUVs that they do, and it's fully competitive in the market. And I think parts of its angles look really, really good. But overall, the argument against the Carnival, if you can get over that ridiculous name, is how is it better than the top two? And the fact is, is it's not. It just ends up being a little bit more like Kia took an old Dodge Caravan, and then said, how can we make this better than taking, say, an Odyssey and trying to improve on it? The Carnival's not bad. Don't get me wrong. And I truly will say right now, 
draw, if you're in the minivan market, drive every single one of these. See which one fits your needs. See which one the price for the equipment works for you. And if you pick the Carnival, I totally understand. I think it's an okay looking vehicle with an oh, you know, pretty darn good looking interior and enough flexibility. But I don't think they took the best of the best and tried to beat it. I think they actually took an older caravan and updated it to the modern day much more than Chrysler did who went off on some tangent with their styling. Carnival's a good option. If the reliability, if it holds up, it's a really good option. But it's not a huge discount. And why would you choose it over one of the top two? Now, for the top two, no big surprise who these two are, but I've got to give number two to the Toyota Sienna. Now, here's the thing, is I really like the Sienna. It is really good looking outside. It's really good looking inside. And I'm kind of impressed. They only offer one powertrain option. That is a four-cylinder hybrid. It's not an option. And so here you get a hybrid, whereas the Chrysler Pacific starts at like $15,000 extra. Here you get it standard with the Sienna. It's a strong seller. It's got Toyota reliability. It's super comfortable. It's flexible. I, I think there's almost nothing not to like about this minivan. And I understand if you buy it over, say, the Carnival or my number one choice. I looked at the Sienna multiple times and thought, yeah, this is the one I want. And then changed my mind later on. It's a solid, solid entry from Toyota and expected Toyota reliability. And that hybrid powertrain gives fantastic gas mileage. I think it's a strong contender. It's it's nearly number one, which is why I say number one could be a tie. But ultimately, I've got to go with my number one being the Honda Odyssey. There's very little to dislike about the Odyssey. And yes, in full, full transparency, we owned an Odyssey and we owned a Sienna before that. The Odyssey, to me, just handles a little bit better. I like the V6. While I raved about the hybrid and the, the, the Toyota just a minute ago, I love the V6 and the Honda. And I also like the minimalist approach to the interior. It's just a little cleaner, a little crisper. It rides well. It's got flexible seating. It does everything well, and I like the styling of it. It looks wider. It's got that lightning bolt styling down the side. There's really nothing to dislike about this minivan. Now, if you chose the Toyota over the Honda, I'm certainly not going to get upset about it. If you to chose the Carnival, I wouldn't get upset about it. If you chose the Pacifica, you know, fine. That's your choice. I wouldn't get upset about it. But I do think that the Odyssey is our number one choice. We've looked at these vans. And ultimately, our ranking is what I've told you. The Pacifica, honestly, don't trust the reliability of it and don't really love the styling. The Carnival, the name, what it offers for the price, is it worth it over the top two? And then the Sienna and the Odyssey, number one and number two for us. Which one do you choose? Well, it's a matter of personal taste and the flavor of the vehicle. I got to admit, I prefer the Honda overall for its minimalist styling and doing everything excellently. But having that hybrid powertrain and the fuel efficiency that comes with that Toyota, that's really, really a strong package. And that leads me to my honorable mention, which is the Volvo EM90. Now, I mentioned this at the end because, number one, it's not available in America, and they haven't said whether they're going to be bringing it here. But Volvo has developed a purely electric luxury minivan. And I've been waiting for something like this for many years, as a matter of fact. I'm a little surprised that manufacturers have not did not, at the heyday of minivans, develop a luxury minivan. Here comes Volvo, and they're making it battery electric. I suspect they'll bring it here. I really do. And it looks super, super cool. I can't rank it on this list because we have no idea what we would get or the range or the price or anything else. But I wanted to mention it because I think there's a, quite a few families out there 
who would like to have a battery electric that they charge overnight. It's fully fueled up the next day and they get to drive their kids around to soccer practice and school. And I think Volvo would have a hit on their hands. I appreciate you being here. Let me know your thoughts below, guys.